calculating the sample 100 piece percentile. One, order the data from the smallest to the largest. Two, determine the product, sample size times proportion, n times p, okay? If n times p is not, a, not, not an integer, round it up to the next integer and find the corresponding order value. If n times p is not an integer, oh, sorry, if n times p is an integer, say k, calculate the average of the case in k plus one order value. Example, calculate quantiles to summarize the length of phone calls, okay? Let's apply the rule just covered to this example. And an administrator wanted to study the utilization of long distance telephone service by a department. One variable of interest is the length in minutes of long distance calls made during one month. There were 38 calls that resulted in a connection. The length of calls already ordered from the smallest to largest are presented in the following table, okay? Since the variable of interest is X, and X is what? The length of long distance course. You may use in minutes. Okay, so this is X1, X2, up to X10, X11, up to X20, X21 to X30. This is X31, this is X38. Look at those observations already put in ascending order. Okay, and our next, our first exercise, we want to find the second quintile. Okay, now the first quintile, from what we covered last time, is a 20th percentile. And the second quintile is the uh, 40s what? Percentile. So this is P20. This is P40. And what we want to do, we want to do second, second quintile. Okay, second quintile. Apply the rule just covered, okay? First one, we order the data from smallest to largest one. The data already in ascending order, so we don't need to do anything here. Second one, determine the product, n times p, okay? So, let's see. Find the second quintile. That is P40. The sample size is 38. And the P is 40%. So this together implies N times P, 38 times 0 0.4. 38 times 0 0.4 or 40%. That is 15.2. Now, 15.2, 15.2 15 
Who gave you? N times P is not an integer. 15.2 is not an integer. Run it up to the next integer and find the corresponding order value, okay? If this is not an integer, obviously 15.2, this is not an integer. So we run it up to what? To 16. What's 16? X16, okay? X16. And what's X16 in our table? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is X16. X16 is 7.5 minutes, okay? So this is 7.5 minutes. This is 7.5 minutes. From time to time in the test, I find students forget to write down the unit used. If you forget to put down the unit used, you will be deduct some points, okay? Uh, let's stop here. If you want a copy, you have four minutes. Uh, suppose we want to find Q2. Q2 is the second quartile. Or some people say this is what? Median. Or you can say this is the 50th percentile. The 50th percentile. So again, N is 38, P is 50%. So this in price, N times P, 38 times 0 0.5, which is 19, okay? Unlike this one here, 15.2 is not an integer. 19 is an integer. Nineteen is integer. So what happened when n times p is an integer? If n times p is an integer, say k, calculate the average of the k and k plus one's order value. So in this case, k is nineteen, and k plus one is twenty. So look at 19, look at 20. X 19, X 20. You add it up, divide it by two, okay? So let's see, what's X 19, what's X 20? This is X 19. This is X 20. X 19 is 9.3, X 20 is 9.5. 9 so, 9.3 plus 9.5. Add it up, divide by 2. That is what? That's 9.4. Okay? And don't forget, 9.4 minutes. Okay? 9.4 minutes. Um, you want a copy? Go ahead. Suppose we are given a list called X list. One, 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 two, two, three, 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 five, seven, nineteen. 
If the X list represents a population, then we use sigma to represent population standard deviation. And it is found by one minus four squared. Four here is average. One minus four squared plus one minus four squared. Keep doing this. Here, 19 minus four squared divided by 12. If we write in more compact mathematic formula form, it's summation xi minus mu, the whole thing squared divided by n. However, if the given x least represents a sample, then sx, the sample standard deviation, is evaluated by this. 1 minus 4 squared plus 1 minus 4 squared. Keep adding up to 19 minus 4 squared. Then divided by 12. If I stop right here, if I stop right here, these two formula are exactly the same, no difference. However, if this is sample standard deviation, you shouldn't stop here. Instead, you should minus by one. So to find population standard deviation, you divide it by n. To find sample standard deviation, you don't divide it by n. You divide it by one, n minus one. Why is this divided by n? This divided by n minus one. Don't ask. Just memorize it. If I tell you the reason right now, it only confuse you more. I will explain the reason at the end of the semester. Okay? If you want to copy, go ahead. Okay. Um there are typos here. So I want you guys close this out. Don't look at this, okay? Close this out. And I'm gonna explain to you here in great, great detail. This is a population standard deviation. And our formula, one minus four squared plus 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 two minus four squared plus all the way up to what? 19 minus four squared. Divided by n, n here is 12, okay? Or we express as this one. Summation i from one to 12. Xi minus mu x squared. And then divided by 12, okay? For computational purpose, this formula, huh, if you use it, it takes a longer time to find the answer. What you should do, you should use this one. Summation x i minus mu x squared, you can simplify it as summation xi squared minus 2xi mu x plus mu x squared. 
and this is just n. Okay. And this is summation x i square minus summation two x i times mu i plus summation mu x squared and then you divide it by n okay you divide it by n so if i further simplify the formula this is summation x i squared minus this is a constant okay this is a constant this is not mu y this is mu x okay this is mu x two is a constant mu x is constant you can pull it out summation x i plus summation mu, mu x squared mu x is a constant the square is still a constant so you are adding the same constant how many times huh? 12 times this notation summation i from 1 to 1 12 mu x squared is mu x squared plus mu x squared plus all the way up to mu x squared how many times 12 times 12 is what is n so this one become n times what mu x squared over n okay how about this one here summation 2xi mu x these two together are constant okay for example we can consider this is what mu x is what mu x is 4 okay so 4 times a is what 4 times 2 is what? 8. So it's summation 1. A x i. i from 1 to 12. So you can consider this one as a times what? x1. Plus a times x2. Plus all the way up to summation 2 x i times mu x. Mu x is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So A X I sum that up. That means A times X1 plus A times X2 plus all the way up to A times X12. Okay? By distribution law, it's just A times what? X1 plus X2 plus all the way up to X12. And this is a times summation one, x i, i from one to one. Yeah. And this eight is just what? Hmm? It's just two mu x summation x i. Okay? Are you with me? So let's simplify this expression. This is summation x i squared. Okay, minus two mu x summation x i divided by what n and times n because n n cancel it back to minus two mu x summation x i plus a mu x squared over n. Okay? So look at here. This is summation x i squared minus 2 mu x. What is this term here? You add all the x i together divided by n, that's your mu x times n. 
So this is n mu x squared, okay? Divided by n. If I further simplify this, the summation x i squared minus mu x mu x mu x squared, but this is minus two n mu x squared. This is plus n mu x squared. And then you divide it by n. Okay? So this is summation x i squared minus, this is minus two n mu x squared, this is plus n mu x squared. So only one n mu x squared left. But you divide it by n. So this one is summation x i squared divided by n minus one mu x squared. Okay? Use this one. For computational purpose. Okay? In our example, how are we going to use the formula? If x least is a population, this means 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square plus 2 square plus all the way up to what? 19 square. Then you divide it by 12. And then minus mu x is what? 4, 4 square. This calculation will be way faster than this one. Okay? Because in this calculation, you save what? You save n minus 1 subtraction. Okay? Okay, let's take a close comparison between these two formula. Subtraction, 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 subtraction. How many of them? We have 12 subtraction and 12 what? square operation. And how many here you have subtraction? You have only one. Okay, only one. So you actually save what? 11 subtraction. That's why right. when you use this one, you will get the answer what? much faster than this one, okay? Um, what happened if the given least represents a sample standard deviation, okay? If the given least, if x least represents A sample. Then SX, then SX is what? One minus four squared. One minus four squared. Plus all the way up to what? 19 minus four squared. Divided by 12. Remember, you need to subtract by one, okay? So in this case, we know this is summation x i minus x bar squared over n minus one, okay? A, sim a similar simplif simplification applied to this procedure here. It becomes summation x i squared minus n x bar squared. But now it's not divided by n, it's divided by n minus one. So this one is summation x i squared over n minus one. Minus n over n minus one, x bar squared, okay? This is a formula used when given x least represents a sample, okay? Um, you want to copy? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, 
Um, I'm going to give you a turn by turn interpretation of standard deviation. Okay. Now, turn by turn interpretation of standard deviation. What is standard deviation? This is a formula for standard deviation. And what does this number try to tell us? Okay, to give a turn by turn interpretation, let's look at the dot plot. Average x in our example, average x is four. This is average x. And this observation here is what? It's x12. xr, say this is x12, minus average x. So, x12 is 19. And average x is 4. So this is positive 15. What do you learn from this? Well, this carry two pieces of information. Positive show us the direction. 15 tell us the distance. If this is positive, that means observation is bigger than what? Bigger than average. It's fall on the right hand side of average. Okay? That's why it's positive. If this is negative, that means the observation is on what? Huh? On left hand side of the average. Okay? So this tells us the direction. And 15 tells us the distance to the center. Distance to what? To average. Okay, this tells us the distance to average. Deviation carry two information. One is distance. And the other one is what? Direction. Direction and distance to the average. But if I squared it, xi minus average squared distance square to the center. Remember, center is measured by what? By average, okay? Now, summation xi minus average square. This is xi minus average square is distance square to the center. But summing up is a total, is a total summing what? Total distance square to the center. If I divide it by n or divide it by n minus one, that is average distance square to the center. Average distance square to the center, we call it variance. Okay, we call it variance. Some people may say, why should I care about average distance square to the center? I'm more interested in average distance to the center. I'm not so care about average distance square to the center. If this is a situation, very simple, we just take square root, okay, take square root. Average distance to the center, that is what? That is standard deviation, okay? So we know variance is what? Standard deviation squared, okay? Now look at here. So what do we learn from standard deviation? The standard deviation says how far away numbers on a list are from their average. Or you say, a typical observation in the least, what is its distance to what? To the center, okay? Average distance to the center, that is standard deviation. Or you say, standard deviation tells us 
how far away number on the list are from what? Their average, okay? Okay, next one, introduce you the coefficient of relative variation, CRB, for the standard deviation. Is a standard deviation expressed as a percentage of the mean, x bar. CRB is a standard deviation over average times 100%, okay? Comments on CRB and other measures of dispersion for a given least. One, to compare two different standard deviations quickly, the social researchers will sometimes compute the CRB for each and then discuss the differences between them. A standard deviation of one with X bar equal to 100 represents, relatively speaking, less variation than standard deviation of one with average x equal to 10, okay? Um, probably not that easy to understand, just reading the paragraph. So let me try to give you a very simple example so you know what I mean, okay? CRB coefficient of relative variation. Okay. Coefficient of relative variation. Okay. Coefficient of relative variation. CRB for standard deviation. How we find it? It's standard deviation over average, then times what? 100%, okay? Now, example. Say three SFU students celebrate that final exam is over. Let's see, who are they? Peter, Yuki, and Eric, okay? Three SFU students. You know, student cannot be what? Too rich. So when they celebrate, the final is over. They go together to what? To Matano. Peter is the poorest student of all three. So he ordered what? Big Mac meal. And you know, big main meal, it comes with what? Pop. And this cost Peter $9, okay? And Yuki is a little bit better off. So he also ordered big Mac, big Mac meal. But he replaced pop by what? Buy coffee. Okay. And this upgrade costs Yuki one extra dollars. Okay. And Eric is the richest one of all three students. Okay. He also ordered Big Mac milk. 
he also ordered Big Mac meal, but he upgraded from coffee to cappuccino or coffee. And this cost him what? $11. Okay? Now look at here. $9, $10, and $11. Where is the center? Well, this is the center. And what's the standard deviation? Average distance to the center. 9 to 10, $1. 11 to 10, also $1. So average distance to the center is $1. So average is $10. Standard deviation is what? One dollar. Okay. Um, if you don't know how I get it, very simple. You just use what? Sample standard deviation formula. Nine minus ten square plus ten minus ten square plus eleven minus ten square. And since this is sample, three minus one. So this gives what? One dollar is a spread, okay? So for three poor students, the average expense in Matano is $10 and the spread is one dollar, okay? Average is $10, standard deviation is one dollar, okay? Now, on the other side of the city, say this is West Bend, okay? Three rich merchant also celebrate. They celebrate because a deal is just closed. All three merchant make a lot of money. Okay, so they are very happy. And how do you know they are rich? They forget who are the three person. Okay. First person is called Richard. Hmm? Richard is what? Is rich, okay? And who is the second person? Second person is Mooney. This guy even get one more all the money. So he must be rich. And the last person, banker. From his name, you know he's pretty rich, okay? Uh, since they are rich, they are not going to go to a Matano to celebrate, okay? They go for what? A five-star restaurant. Order all you can eat seafood buffet, okay? And for that, Reach or what? Or not just what? Seafood buffet. They order champagne, right? Um, for that meal, Reach will spend $99. And Moody spend $100. And Banker spend what? 101 So what is the average? Average is $100. And how about the standard deviation? From 99 to 100, that is $1. And from 101 to 100, that's also what? $1. Okay? So in this case, average is $100. And standard deviation, $1. Okay? Standard deviation, $1. Look at these two, these two group of people. The spread, both equal to $1. But for poor student, that $1 means a lot. For a rich merchant, that $1 means what? Nothing. So although the absolute value for the spread is the same for two group of people, but they means different, okay? Relative speaking, for poor student, that $1 means more. So $1 in this group, has a bigger spread, relatively speaking. 
So how can we express or describe this subtle concept? We need to use CRV, okay? This is group one. We call this is group one. And this is three rich merchant. This is group two. Okay. CRV for group one, the poor student. Okay. Standard deviation is one dollar and average is ten dollars times one hundred percent. This is ten percent. And this ten percent is bigger than CRV of second group. Standard deviation also one dollar, but average is one hundred dollar times what? One hundred percent. Okay, times one hundred percent. So this is one percent. As you can see, ten percent is bigger than one percent. Therefore, relatively speaking, this group have more square, even though the absolute value of standard deviation for both groups equal to one dollar. But relatively speaking, this one dollar should represent what more square. Okay. Um, you want to copy? Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> we are not going to cover rule mean square size of a list. And we are not going to cover mean deviation, MD. Just read this yourself, okay? The next one we're going to cover is this one, okay? Let's see. To characterize a symmetric distribution, we can just use two numbers, okay? Uh, to cover this one in full detail, let me use the ruler paper, okay? Now look at the picture here. Suppose we have two distribution, distribution A and B, okay, distribution A and B. And both, as you can see, both distribution are symmetric. Both are symmetric, okay? Now, question, which one is easier to identify its center? A or B? Huh? Think about it. Give you one minute. Okay, let's see. Which one's easier? The answer is what? Huh? A is easier. Why A is easier? Because distribution A has relatively small one spread, okay? Since it has a smaller spread, either you are wrong, you cannot be too wrong, because its cell is one. Huh? Doesn't have too much spread, okay? So A is easier to justify center. And from this picture, you can also see to describe symmetric distribution, all we need to know is average. Average tells us the center of the distribution. And 
other than the center, huh? this is what? Standard deviation B tell us the spread about the center. Okay? So from the picture, we can easily find, okay? To categorize a symmetric distribution, we can just use two numbers. One is average, and the other one is standard deviation. Average describe where the center. Standard deviation tells how big is the spread around the center, okay? However, more numbers should be used if the distribution is asymmetric, uh, means what? Not symmetric, always strong outlier. In the later case, five number summary is a good choice, okay? Now, look at our X distribution. One, 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 two, two. Three, 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 five, seven, nineteen, okay? Now, this distribution, as we described before, one, 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 two, two, three, three, three. Five, seven, and what? And nineteen. You can see this is what? Hmm? This is right skew. This is right skewed with a high with a high outlier it's right skew with a high outlier so use average equal to four and standard deviation equal to what uh, i think 4.84 okay this is not as good because the distribution is not symmetric right so, prefer use five number summary. You use average and standard deviation for symmetric distribution. But a distribution like this, right skew with high outlier, we prefer using what? Five number summary. And what's the five number summary? Five numbers are minimum. Q1, Q2, Q3, and maximum. Minimum is one. Maximum is 19. Okay, look at here. When people give us a list, what's median? Median is a middle number that divides the list into two parts of equal size. In this case, two plus three divided by two is 2.5, okay? And the middle number of the first half is Q1. And the middle number of the second half is Q3. Okay, so you just write down the number. Q1 is one, Q2 is what? Q2 is 2.5. Q3 is 4. And five number summary will be a better choice than what? Use average and standard deviation, okay? Now, let's recall what we covered before. Stem plot. 155, 158. 165, 165, 168. 170. 172, 172, 176, 178, 181, 196, okay? 
Uh, please find the file number summary for this example, which we covered before, okay? All together, you have five minutes. The shortest during the class, Queenie, 155 centimeter. And the tallest one in the class, John, 196 centimeter. And median is a middle number that divides the least into two parts of equal size. One, two, three, four, five, six. We cut it here. The first six, the second six. So 170 plus 172 divided by two. The median is 171 centimeter. Okay? And Q1 is a middle number of the first half. This is Q1. 165. And Q3 is the middle number of the second half. So that is 177 centimeter tall. Okay? Uh, you want to copy? Go ahead. We have one minute. Okay, next one, we call it box plot. A box plot is a graphical representation of the file number summary, okay? This is a stem plot. This is a box plot, okay? How you make the box plot? Well, we just did it, right? The minimum, the shortest one of the class, Queenie. 155 centimeter tall. This is minimum. About one, 155 here. And Q1, 165. And Q2, 171. Q3, 177. Maximum, John, 196. Okay, you first draw some horizontal segment. Then you join by some vertical segment, like this one here. This is called, this is called a box plot, okay? This is called box plot. Now, question, which one carry more detailed information, a box plot or a stem plot? To answer the question, it's actually very easy. If I give you a stem plot, can you make a box plot? Answer is yes. But if I give you a box plot, can you produce a stem plot? It's no. So which one carry more detailed information? A box plot or a stem plot? Answer. A stem plot. Is that right? Carry more detailed information means better? No. No such thing. When you don't need that much detailed information, carry too much can be a burden. So this is what we say. We say a box plot has more summarization. A stem plot carry more detailed information, okay? So why, what is the reason people use box plot? Well, as you can see in the picture here, a box plot is useful for side-by-side -side comparison. This is my statistic 270 class. This is my statistic 201 class. I put them side by side. I can compare these two distribution in a very easy way. So what kind of number we compare on the distribution, okay? Remember, we compare what? What feature we compare between two distribution? Remember, we cover shape, center, and spread, 
Okay, we cover shape, the center, and spread. Let's begin with the spread. Let's begin with the spread. Okay, before we cover spread, uh, I give you what? One minute to reproduce the box plot. Okay. Okay. Um, compare these two distributions side by side. Okay. What are the imp important features we want to make of the comparison? We compare the spread first. Uh, look at these two distributions. So far, how many number we introduce you can be used to compare the spread? First one. Maximum minus minimum. Maximum minus minimum. This is core. This is core range. What else? Q3 minus Q2, Q1. Q3 minus Q1. This is core IQR. Okay? <coughs> We have covered a few number that can what? Can describe the spread. Range, IQR, standard deviation, CRV for standard deviation, rule mean square size and mean deviation. Okay? But when you look at the box plot, there are only two numbers available. One is maximum minus minimum, that is range. And the other one is Q3 minus Q1, that's called IQR, okay? So let's see. For these two pictures, first we compare the range, okay? As we can see, range 201 is way bigger than range 270, okay? How about IQR? IQR 201. Also way bigger than what? IQR 270. So it doesn't matter you use IQR or range, they give you a consistent answer. Stead 201 had what? the bigger spread. In high distribution. Okay. However, imagine that if we replace John 196 by Yao Ming. Yao Ming is a former NBA player for Houston Rocky. Yao Ming was what? 226 centimeter tall. Okay? If John is replaced by Yao Ming, then we can see range 270 is bigger than range of 201. But how about IQR? IQR 201 still way bigger than IQR. 270. Okay. If Yao Ming replaces John. Then we find range 201 is less than range 270 because Yao Ming is so tall. Okay? 
But IQR201 is still bigger than IQR270. So which one should we use? IQR or range, okay? Think about it, which one we should use? And the answer is we should use what? IQR, okay? We should use IQR. Why we should use IQR? Because Yao Ming is an outlier. Exclude Yao Ming. Most students in 2 what? 270 class, they are high ask are way closer than those students in what? In 201. So you don't want to, because what? One or two what? Extreme observation, change your conclusion, okay? So which one should be used to describe the spread of distribution? We should use IQR. So since IQR is what? Since IQR is more resistant. More resistant to what? More resistant to outliers. Okay? This is important concept. When we describe distribution with numbers. Okay? Now let me write this down. Principle. When Describing distribution with numbers, we prefer using numbers. that are more resistance. More resistant to what? More resistant to outlier, okay? Um, look at here. IQR is more resistant than outlier, okay? Uh, IQR is more resistant than range. More resistant to what? More resistant to outliers. We talk about spread first, then we go to center, okay? Spread, center, center, and then we're going to cover shape. What kind of question I can ask about the center? A typical question to ask is which class was the total class. Of course, you know, it cannot be everybody in one class taller than everybody in the other class. So when we say which class is taller, we're going to use typical person on what? Each class to make the comparison. Typical person, or you say average person. You want to measure the center. Um, in box plot, to measure the center. Remember what are the number we can use to measure the center? We introduce you mode, median, and mean. But in the box plot, we have only median to use, okay? So which class taller? You look at the picture. Huh? The center is bigger than this one, right? The center of 201 class is bigger than the center of 270 class. So you can say median 201 is bigger than median 270. So we say hmm, class 201 was what? Was the total class, okay? Um, you wanna copy? 
One minute. A lot of people say, hey, that's, it's God. How can you tell the shape from a box plot? A box plot carry only five numbers. So you cannot tell anything about the shape. Is that right? Let's see. Hey, this is some distribution W. As you can say, as you can see, W is what? Is right skew. Okay. From basic guideline of drawing a graph, we know under the curve, a hundred observation, or you say all observations should be covered exactly once. So if I tell you, up to here, cover what? Cover 50% of observation. Say this is 50% of observation. Then the other part must cover the rest what? 50%. By definition, 50% of observation greater or equal to what? This number. No, 50% of observation less or equal to this number. And the other 50% of observation greater or equal to this number. By definition, this number is what? Q2, or you call it median. And furthermore, if I tell you from here to here, okay, this cover what? 25% of observation. This number is Q1. If I tell you this is also cover what? Hmm? 25% of observation. This number is Q3. As you can see from the picture, Q3 minus Q2 from here to here is way bigger than from here to here. Okay? So in the right skew curve, What we expect to see, we expect to see Q3 minus Q2 should be way bigger than Q2 minus Q1. Okay? Similarly, if I flip the picture over, okay? I flip it over. In a left skew distribution of curve. Q3 minus Q2 should be way smaller than Q2 minus Q1. Now, in a symmetric distribution, these two numbers, Q3 minus Q2, should be very close to what? Q2 minus Q1. Okay? You want to copy? Look at the picture here. Step to the class, as you can see, Q3 minus Q2 is equal to Q2 minus Q1. So this class is symmetric. How about this class? 201. Q3 minus Q2 is way bigger than Q2 minus Q1. So this is what? This is right skew. Okay? So step 270 class. Okay, Q3 minus Q2 is equal to Q2 minus Q1. So we say this is what? Symmetric. Symmetric distribution, okay? In step 270 class, Q3 minus Q2. Q3 is 177. Q2 is 
171, which is 6. 6 is equal to Q2 is what? 171 minus Q1 is 165. Okay, they are equal, so it's symmetric. Instead, 201 class, we find Q3 minus Q2 is way bigger than Q2 minus Q1. So we say this is right skewed. 